Hey guys, it's George here, and I just want to really, really quickly run through you guys how to stream via your webcam and also screen share at the same time. It'll be a really quick video, but we've had a few people ask about this, so I just want to—I'm just going to dive straight in and let you know how to do it. So as you can see, I've got my screen, my second screen over here, which is on the stream and I've got my little face down here on my webcam and I've got a quick bit of wax branding up in the top left as well. So I'm just going to dive straight in and let you know how to do this on OBS. So obviously the first step is to open up OBS. You will then see there's some scenes down here. Scenes are essentially, they work quite similar to composition, sequences, stuff like that from other programs that you might know. So we're just really going to quickly make one. We'll just call it scene three for the sake of argument and we'll hit OK. Now everything's gone black, that's because now there are no video sources, there are so essentially no visual channels. So we need to correct that. So how do we add a video channel or a visual source, sorry? Is we hit this plus down here in the source box and then the first thing I want to add is a display capture. So I'll just hit the display capture up here, this is so I can see one of my screens, so we'll just call it mirror. And now you can see this crazy, insane mess of mirroring, 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 mirroring. And it looks pretty awful and it goes on infinitely and to be honest, it's kind of hurting my brain. So, how are we gonna fix that? Well, I may as well just swap over to my other display using this thing down here and already I'm feeling a lot calmer. So, that's all good. What we can do if we want to is we can chuck a crop on that. I'm not going to, but if you want to, it's real easy, just do it like that. And it looks pretty good. Although it's not quite perfect as they've scaled it up quite a lot and it just doesn't really fit the screen very nicely. So the way I'm going to fix that is I'll right click, I'm just going to hit transform and fit to screen and boom, there you go, it looks lovely. Now we've done that, we may as well go straight ahead and add our webcam. So how do I do that? Well again I'll go hit that plus and I will hit video capture device. Now I'll do that, I'll just call it cam and we've got our devices. The only device I've got currently is my webcam, but say if you plugged in a camera or something like that, then this is also where you find it. So I'll just hit that and you can see my beautiful face massively on the screen right now. And we can also just quickly set the resolution. I'm actually gonna go straight for high, because why not? Just means that uh, my webcam will look slightly better, but actually it doesn't really matter because I will probably scale it down quite a lot anyway. So again, it acts the same as another layer like the other one does. I'm layering it on top and what I'll do is I'll just make it smaller and I'll pop it in the bottom right corner like most streamers do. And there you go. Now, the last visual source I would like to add is some branding so that we look real professional and it's nice just to have a few animations or at least a PNG with the logo on the top of your video. So I'll do that by hitting the plus hitting image, I'm just really going to quickly, I'll just call it Wex, and I'm just really quickly going to go find that PNG, so we'll go, there we go, and boom, there you go, it's overlaid, it also is massive, it's come in really big again, so just to fix that, I'll just transform fit to screen again. And there we go, we have quite a nice looking thing. You can see that now I could open up programs if I wanted on this monitor and talk about them. So perhaps if I was playing games or if I was doing a tutorial, I could do it like this and it'd be quite like a, you know, quite a visual manner so you can see me talking but also seeing my actions. Now one thing I would like to point out is that these sources down here essentially work like layers like uh, other other programs use. So if I went and took this mirror, this uh, screen at the back, and put it up the top, it would get rid of myself and the Wex logo. So if I just fix that, so just make sure when you're ordering them that you don't get anything lost or have stuff overlaying that shouldn't be. I would also really, really quickly like to mention that you can control the gain here. So I'm currently using the inbuilt mic on my laptop. So if I wanted to chuck up the gain a little bit, if I was feeling a little bit quiet today, then I can do that, it probably doesn't sound very nice now, I'm probably peaking a bit. Or I can turn it down there, that might actually sound better for you because you can hear a lot less of me, uh, we're not sure. But for the purpose of most streams, you kind of want it to be hitting around minus 10, is kind of like a nice, minus 10 to minus 12 is a really nice area for the peaks to be hitting without any peaking going on. 
So now we're all set up and we're all ready visually and audio wise to stream but I will just go through some final settings for you. So we'll just go into the settings down the bottom right here and we've got a whole load to look at. So first I'm going to go into video output and you can see you can choose your encoder. Now I'm going to use H.264, it's actually the only encoder I've got here but if you have an external encoder or you have like certain graphics cards like uh, stuff like Nvidia have their own encoders that you can use that sometimes will be better sometimes worse than H.264 then you can use those instead but I'm going to use 264 because to be honest you know it's a very common um, compression and encoding rate and like I just know it that it works and I know that it actually compresses quite a lot so it will probably be ample for this stream but you can set it to whatever you want You've then got bitrate. Bitrate is super duper important here because it's essentially, well I mean, it's it's a very important thing to have a play around with because the lower your bitrate, the worse your video is going to look. It will look a bit blocky and it just might not look too nice. But if you set your bitrate too high, your stream is going to become unstable and therefore it won't look good. You might drop out, there'll be a lot of lag and it just won't be nice for the viewers. So what bitrate should you choose? Well, I'd recommend going online and doing a speed test. There's something like speedtest.net is a really, really good one. Having a look at your upload speed, and then dependent on that, setting your bitrate. Now, I'm gonna output, set up this stream to output at 720p, and I'd say, to be honest, if you, if you are outputting about 720p, there's no point going much higher than 3000 to 3500. So while the more bitrate is better, it will just sort of get to a point where it's capped and you're just stressing out your internet connection for very little image quality. For this, I'd say the best thing to do is to check out your speed test, but then also to play around with it. So once you've set up the whole stream, mess around with your bitrate, put it, put it up, put it down, and just see how consistent your stream is and how it affects the visual. Because it's not necessarily an exact science, I'd just say play around with it and see what you can find. Um, in terms of recording, I actually can't mess with these settings right now because I'm currently screen recording. But you can choose your recording path, you can choose your recording formats like MP4, MOV, AVI, all the standard players there. And you can actually record at a significantly higher format than you're streaming at. If you choose to do so, I'm actually doing that right now. So while I'm set, going to set up my stream to be outputting at 720p, my recording format is much higher because I want this little video to look pretty for you guys. Um, you've then got audio bitrate, works pretty similar to video bitrate to be honest. So again, I'd say 160 is what it's at for me and that's actually ample, that'll do me just fine. And then you've got your actual audio settings. So you've got sample rate, you may well be familiar with that. I actually can't change my sample rate because the program has to be restarted for that to go into effect. So I'll leave it at 44.1. And then you've got mono, stereo, surround sound channels. You know, I can't imagine most of that's relevant. Most people will be sticking with stereo, but it's there if you want it. And you've got your mic auxiliary audio. So this is where you'll then decide, you'll tell the program which microphone you want to use. I haven't actually got any other microphones in, so my default is my built-in. But say if you chucked a shotgun mic in or something like that, then this is where you would select it to get that better mic quality. There's a few other audio settings you can play with, but to be honest, they're not really that relevant. Like you could mess around with your decay rates and stuff if you want to, but most people won't need to. Or you can enable push to talk, so perhaps if you're gaming and you don't want everybody to just be listening to that the whole time, then there you go, you've got that for you. Now, then we'll go on to video, and this is what I was saying earlier. So here's the base resolution. My base resolution is 1080p, but I'm actually outputting to 720 just because it will probably give me a more consistent stream. Then I've got my downscale filter. The more sampling involved in downscale filters, the more CPU and Wi-Fi it's going to be using. So it's just something to play around with and see what's going to work for your setup. It will look slightly better with more samples, but it will perhaps be less consistent. It really depends on your setup. Again, then we've got FPS. So this is a similar thing where you know the higher the FPS the more it is going to stress out your CPU and your Wi-Fi but also think about perhaps what's relevant in terms of FPS so if you're streaming a presentation or a talk or something 
You really don't need to have a high frame rate a second, 25, 30 will do you fine. Um, whereas if you're a gamer, then you know, you do really ideally want to be pushing yourself up to like 60 FPS, but you know, just take it with a pinch of salt because although you might want to have those higher frame rates a second, I would say, in my opinion, it's better to have a more consistent stream that is slightly less good looking than a really, really pretty stream that just doesn't work properly. But again, that's all down to discretion. This stuff is not an exact science. So where are we going to go from here? Well, now I've gone through all the settings with you. We've made sure we're happy and we've played around with it all. And now it's time to get our streaming service involved. So. You've got all the services on here, all the major players are here, you've got Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter's Periscope thing, um, there's plenty going on there, so you can choose whatever one you want to use. I would choose Twitch, because it is probably, in my opinion, the most popular streaming service. Uh, and then you've got the server, so again, if you've got your location stuff on, don't worry about this, but if not, just chuck it to wherever you are. And then your stream key. I can't really show you guys how to find your stream key, because... Uh, dependent on the servers you're using, they're all in different places, but they're make it, they don't make it hard to find. So with a quick Google search or just messing around on their platforms, you'll be able to find that really quickly. And that the stream key is essentially what tells OBS where you're streaming to and how to get it there. So it is very important, but it's super easy to find, so don't stress that bit at all. And there you go. That's pretty much everything you need to do to stream via a webcam and share your screen on OBS. Um, so now we're all ready, you can either screen record down here, I'm currently screen recording, but it would say start, and you can just hit start stream and then boom, you're off. And you can stream to your mates, business colleagues, whoever you need to with it, you know, it's really just as easy as that. Now we're going to be doing a lot of content on streaming in the near future because it's something that a lot of people are asking us about at the moment. Um, so what I would say is this is certainly not going to be the last video in this series for us. So if you do have any questions or you're struggling with settings or literally anything at all, chuck them in a comment in this video and we will either get back to you in comment form or we'll actually make whole videos about stuff that you guys are struggling with. So please get involved and let us know what you think because we want to be making content that's working best for your needs. But for now, I really hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.